Hello everybody, welcome to Bubble and Squeak. My name is Debbie and today we're going to make some Easter soaps that are relatively easy um, for beginner soapers. So there's going to be many videos after this one um, that will take you through step by step becoming an advanced soaper. So let's get started. So today we're going to need a mold. and I've chosen to use mica and this is Stardust mica powders. We have Poppin' Pink, we're going to use Yellow Zest and this one is Ice Blue. So they're going to be very vibrant colors for Easter. The scent I've chosen today is Chocolate Drizzle by Kendora Soap because when we think of Easter we think of chocolate. We have our 91% rubbing alcohol. I know this one says 70, however, I have poured 91% um, alcohol into this particular bottle. Uh, I suggest the highest level of alcohol percentage that you can possibly get in your area. Uh, for me, I can only get the 91%. Um, I might go online and see if, on Amazon if I can find a 99%, but for now, 91% is good enough. Today we're going to be using a heat gun, but I will also talk about how to monitor uh, the temperature of your soap to some degree without using this, um, but I like to use the infrared uh, temperature gun to know where my soap is at in temperature as I melt it. Obviously we're going to need soap. I have three soap containers here. These are my favorite ones to use because it has the easy to pour spout. I've already gone ahead and measured out um, soap. My mold takes four ounces per bar so I've put four ounces in three different containers here so that when we have our three colors I can pour approximately three bars of soap using the three colors. I have my little containers with a little bit of wrapping all alcohol in it ready to go. Um, these are what I'm going to be putting my colors into to mix them up. I use these little sticks. I don't know exactly what they are, but I like to use them to scoop out my um, mica powders. But you can use a little tiny spoon, anything you have, just to get a little bit of powder onto uh, the end of your spoon, or in my case, I use these little sticks to put into your rubbing alcohol so that you can stir it in. I have my handy dandy pipette with the ounce markings to draw up my scenting so that I know exactly how much I'm putting in them. I have my chopstick that I like to use for, well, I guess it's a skewer actually, um, to stir everything with. I have my um, cloth on my table so that if I spill anything I can mop it up right away and of course I have the mat to protect the surface that I'm going to be working on. So I'm going to go ahead and melt down the soaps. Um, this is a soap that I purchased from Candora Soap and it's called a three butter soap. It's the premium one. It's got shea butter, it's got cocoa butter and mango butter in the soap base so it's a lovely soft soap. Um, I will put the link below to the Candora website so that you can purchase these if you want to. They are an absolutely lovely soap. So I'm going to melt these down until Everything's melted, but they're not boiling. I do it in the microwave at about 20 second bursts at half power to start to get the soap melting. And then I will keep going at 10 second bursts until it's completely melted down. There might be a little bit of chunking left, but I'll stir that out. I don't want to boil the soaps. If you boil your soap, it can start to sweat. And what that means is any liquids that you put in it when it's setting will uh, sweat out of the soap and your scenting won't be as good. Some of your coloring might bleed out of the soap and we don't want that. So try not to boil your soaps. If you're really unsure about the microwave, I suggest you use a double boiler and melt down your soaps that way so you can keep an eye on it. 
I'm experienced enough with this now that I can use the microwave. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt these down and we'll be back. Okay, so I've melted down my soap base. So all three containers have their soap melted in them. And that's what it looks like all melted down. So the first thing we're going to do is add in our mica powders. So we're gonna get the three um, bath bomb molds with their colors ready to go into each soap. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit to each mold here. So we have our pink and we have our blue ice. This is one of my favorite colors. It's kind of got a tinge of, I think, purple in it. It looks really neat. I'm just going to add a little more here. And we're going to use yellow zest. So again, I'm just going to take a little bit on my, um, I don't know what to call this thing, scooper, and put it in. There is no magic formula on how much um, mica to put in. You don't want it to be really um, uh, thick in your alcohol but you don't want it to be a, um, more alcohol than there is the mica powder. Um, at this point, I'm gonna clean my hands up and I'm gonna put gloves on. That's something I forgot to mention at the beginning, you will need to wear gloves, especially if you're making this for other people. Um, gloves are very important so we don't contaminate the soap. I did have clean hands before, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put the gloves on because we should do what we tell other people to do. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. And I have my gloves on now. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir my soaps up just to make sure that they're ready for everything that they need and that all the soap is definitely melted in each container. I'll just give it a quick stir. Okay. So I'm just gonna check the temperature of the soap sitting at about 172. Um, 175. 173. So these are a little warm for putting the um, coloring in. I like them to be around 170 so that the uh, colors stay true in the soap. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix up the containers here. You can see this is a lovely shade of pink. vibrant blue. And our yellow. So again, a very nice vibrant yellow spring, so we want to see nice spring colors. So I'm just going to check the temperature of my soap again. So this is at 162.1 now. As you can see, the soap cools down pretty quickly. So I'm gonna take our pink and I'm gonna pour it into the soap. And I like to use um, the Misty rubbing alcohol just to get the extra color out into the soap. This way we don't waste any coloring. And the rubbing alcohol will evaporate out of the soap so we don't have to worry about the, uh, the alcohol being in the soap. It will evaporate out. So I'm just going to mix that all in here. And this is the color of our soap. It's a nice vibrant pink. And now we're going to add in our blue. it 
through the side of the container there. So again, we're going to spray this out. And I learned this trick from Anna at Koala Soaps. I'm going to put a link to her site too. She makes some incredible soaps. Um, she's actually pretty much the person that I learned to soap from. Um, she's in the US. I wanted to do something in Canada and I'll probably use some of her soaps that she's done as inspiration for the ones on these videos. Um, she's a fantastic woman and I do believe she sells her soaps down there. I could be wrong but I think she does. There's our blue. It's a nice vibrant yet soft blue. Understand that when you put your micas into your soap base, when it's a white soap base, they're going to be um, not as vibrant as they are in your little pots. Just spray out the coloring into this. By adding more mica, you can make your white soap base more vibrant. Um, I don't mind if some of these are more pastel-y and some are more vibrant because Easter is about pastels and vibrance, so it'll be nice to have the differences. So there's our yellow, Let's stir it in here. There we go, that's a nice yellow to have for the soaps that we're making today. So there we go. Okay, so now our soaps are sitting at approximately 142. So they're getting about ready to pour. They're going to get a skin on them soon, but I like the fact they're in the 140s for adding in um, my scenting. Again, this one is Chocolate Drizzle from, Pen, uh, from Kandora Soap. And I can't remember the flash point of this particular soap, but when you purchase them, um, there is a flash point that means you should not put your scenting into the soap under the flash point, sorry, over the flash point temperature they're talking about for each scent. This one I know we're in the safety zone now, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in about two ounces of each, to each container here. So that's why I like using the pipette because I know exactly how much I'm putting into each soap. And we're going to give each of these soap bases now another stir to get all the scenting mixed in here. Mm, it smells incredible. This is the chocolate drizzle. Figured this would be a nice one to have, use for Easter because I think of chocolate at Easter. Probably shouldn't, but I do. Who doesn't, right? Okay, and our blue, mix it all in. All right, so now we're getting ready to pour. So we're gonna take our soap mold. I'm gonna make sure it's on a nice flat surface. And what we're going to do is we're going to take each color soap and pour it into the molds. Just wanna make sure this is 138, so I think I'm going to wait a second or two to get these a little lower in temperature because what I want to do is swirl these. So if they're in the low 130s, high 120 degrees Fahrenheit, um, I know that they're going to um, swirl better and they're not just going to blend all the colors together into one ugly color. So I'm just going to let them cool down a little more and we'll be right back. Okay, so our soap base is starting to come down in temperature and this is something I wanted to show you. If you don't have one of these uh, temperature guns, you can actually tell when your soap is getting close. I don't know if you can see in here, but there's a skin forming on top. So there we go. You can see it there. So once the skin is forming, we know that our soaps are about the right temperature to pour for um, what we want to do, which is getting a nice 
a blend of colors into a swirl rather than one big ugly mess of a color. Um, if your soap's too hot, the colors are going to blend together. So you can see here, this one's got a skin as well. So I'm just gonna mix that skin in so we don't get skin in our soap. There's the yellow skin. Blend it back in here. But the skin will let us know that our temperatures are ready. This smells so good. I love the Candora soap scents. They are incredible. So are their soaps though too. Okay, so we're gonna take our molds and we're going to pour some color into the bottom of each mold. And there's some skin in there, that's okay, we don't mind. Just to, enough to fill the bottom of each mold for now. We'll do three of them here. Okay. So now I'm gonna pour the blue. I'm just gonna kinda drizzle it into the soap so that we get some swirling going on. Again, in this mold, just drizzle it all in. Doesn't matter if you get some on the outside of the molds. And I'm just gonna keep doing this with the colors to um, get this nice swirl that you can see is going on. So now we're gonna do the pink. I'm just gonna spray some of the bubbles out of this. That's what the rubbing alcohol does. And again, it will dissipate out of the soap. So here we go, pouring some pink. Getting a nice swirl of all these colors. And I'm just going to keep going back and forth and doing this with the different colors. So we started with the yellow. So once I'm done the pink, I'm going to go back to the yellow again. Got a skin on it. I'll just stir that out as best as we can. It doesn't matter if we get a little bit of skin in here. Pour it into these molds. Turning this up. The colors now. Put a little bit more in the first mold again. The fun part about this is you don't know exactly what it's going to look like for each bar when it's done, but each bar will probably be a little bit different. So I'm just going to wipe off my stir stick. Pour the blue now. So this is starting to skin up, so we're going to need to pour a little faster. I got a bunch of skin on my okay, and our last one is the pink. This isn't too cold. If your soap gets too cold, too much skin, you can put it and pop it back in the microwave for 10 second bursts until it's melted. But remember, we don't want it too high of a temperature. So we're just gonna pour as much in as we can here. If I have enough for all the molds. Not that's okay too. These are sample molds. Sample soaps. Okay. So as you can see, we've got lots of skin here. So I'm gonna pop that back in. So I'm gonna take my um, stir stick and I'm just gonna swirl this some. Let's see how this goes. I think I should have remelted some of this. this with rubbing alcohol. I'm just going to melt the rest of my soap back down um, so that I can pour it into these molds and get a bit of more swirl going. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. So I'm going to spray the tops of these soaps again with some rubbing alcohol because the soap now has a skin on top of it. I want the soap that I'm going to pour on it 
to actually um, bond with the soap that's in there and rubbing alcohol gives the soap enough of a film to bond with other soap. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour the rest of my soap in here in little bits. Because there's only a little bit of soap left in each of these containers, it's setting pretty quickly. So let's just pour. So into each one here. bars because I measured out the soap amount. Let's pour that in here. Okay, so I've used up pretty much all of my soap. I'm just going to spray the top again to get rid of any air bubbles. Now this soap you're going to see is going to have some pock marks on the top of it because um, I poured the soap too cold. Um, you know, this is a great learning experience for us to uh, do together. So you want to make sure that you're pouring your soaps when they're still liquid and they're not setting too quickly. What I did was I allowed too much of a skin to form on the surface of my soap in the pouring spouts. So. What I should have done probably in retrospect is heat them up again and then re-pour. It doesn't matter if they're in layers because it's a marbled soap with the different colors so that would have been the best bet. But we're going to let these set now. I just got an air bubble here. And then we're going to unmold them so you can see how they look. The good thing about an uneven surface is we can actually um, clean that up afterwards and um, just wipe it so that the soap becomes a smooth surface. It is better to have a smooth surface on the bottom of your bar to start, but it's okay, it is fixable. That's the nice thing about the soaps and the soap bases. So we're going to let these set now and when they're completely um, molded and dried dried then we will go ahead I guess the word is hardened we will go ahead and mold them and you can see what we have see you soon hi everyone welcome back okay so our, our soaps have set in the molds now so it's time to unmold them and see what we've got so we're going to stretch these silicone molds so that the sides pull away a little bit so that when we unmold them the soaps don't get damaged Oh, so pretty. Oh, they smell so good. So this is our one soap. And you can see that the color has swirled nicely right through the bar. So as you use this bar, you're going to get different colors coming through. And I will clean up the edges. What I generally do is just take my finger and I rub them, the edges, if there's any little bit of excess soap that comes off. That's perfect. And then I might take a knife and just run it along the edge. Um, one that's non-serrated um, just to finish it off. But that's the first bar of soap. Let's get the second one out here. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'm just stretching the molds out so that when I pull the soap out it just pops out nice and easy. I just press from the bottom. Wonderful. So here's our second bar of soap with all the colors running through it. So as you can see, the side that was facing down in the mold is going to be the top of our soap. And last but not least, this is the one that messed up a little bit.
and that one is gorgeous too. So as you can see, I've got a little bit of extra soap on here and this bar is fairly uneven. So I'm gonna take a knife to this one and clean it up. And what I do for the, the pocking in the bottom is I'll probably just um, run my fingers over it. And I have a um, pan that I, I can use that I will put this in just with the pan warm so that the bottom sort of melts into an even surface again. Um, or if this bar was completely messed up, I might want to take it and set it aside so that I can do a different project with it later on, but this one actually looks like it's going to be okay. I just need to clean up the bottom some. So there we have it. We have our three soaps with our pretty Easter colors, and they smell wonderful. They smell like chocolate for Easter. I hope you like this video. I will put links in the um, the comments section, just above the comment section, so that you know where to purchase um, your micas and your scenting and your soap base. And I also put a link to where I bought the molds and anything else I can think of from this video. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon with our next tutorial on soap making.